Don't Sell No Moats, JB and Seth presenting. Take it away, Seth. All right, this is Seth Rubenstein, and uh, I'm, I'm uh, joining you from Atlanta, Georgia. And in Salt Lake City, we have JB Fowler. How are you guys? This is JB Fowler. Chief Product Officer for Domo. It's excited to be here. Definitely excited to uh, talk to you today about Domo and really the best way you guys can take advantage of Domo for your business. And the you know the the provocative question or statement here, don't sell Domo, uh, is really intended to communicate the bottom line, which is it isn't about uh, the the product or the tool that facilitates. Uh, what what it is that we accomplish for you? It's about uh, it's all about you. So we'll go ahead and jump in. Yeah, I'm wondering, Seth, if you need to tell me like to beep when you want me to move the slides or not. Would that be the best way to do? It? I should say beep. Yeah. I yeah. There now. you go. <laughs> all right. So all what right. is Domo? Actually, Seth, let me let me take this. This this is really a reiteration of what we offered up in our first webinar when we uh, talked about this back in January. You know, it's important to note that these value propositions that we're talking here are the exact same that we spoke about before. We definitely like to say that Domotes is a kick-ass SaaS-based remote monitoring and management tool. It's really designed for you guys as system integration professionals or IT prof professionals and how uh, and what you do with your business. We're trying to be a tool that helps you run your business more efficiently what we really want to help you guys do is offer better customer service. We want to reduce the noise that you see within a system that you've installed. We're trying to help you avoid problems within your system. Consequently, we're also trying to help you guys be more efficient. And we're helping you reduce the cost of your operations of your business. Again, whether that is for a residential AV install or it's for a professional commercial install or an enterprise install, we're out there to help you guys you know, run your business more efficiently. We do that pro by providing better information and even optimizing the information that you get from our box. I mean, Seth, is there anything you want to add to that? No, I, I think it's uh, it's time for a beep. We, we can uh, we can keep moving. You don't want to spend a whole lot of time on this, Seth? No, I don't think we need to. I mean, we're uh, remote uh, <laughs> monitoring and management. That's uh, that's what we do. But what Perfect. it's really all about is is uh, you, the the integration company, the service provider, and your relationship with your customer. So it, these are the things that make you great, that connect you. We are the facilitator for that, which is fantastic. But it's all about engagement. It's all about remaining connected without being intrusive. Uh, the products that you choose are the facilitators, not necessarily the brands that matter. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes. The, all of your experience, all of your education, uh, leads to that that knowledge and that this is this is the value proposition This is what makes you special. You're you're a crafts person. You're you're good at what you do Your relationships are what set you apart and what make you feel Connected to your clients and your clients feel connected to you and of course, you know, the best form of marketing is always uh, word of mouth it's it's referrals and that's based on your reputation and, and all of the above. So it's, that's what the, the whole focus of this uh, session is really to point out what we have to point out on a regular basis to folks who contact us and ask us about what it is that we do when really uh, we end up turning it back around and saying, look, we're, we're going to help you do these things, but, but you are the real value. And I, I would add to that, Seth, I mean, that, that reputation aspect. What we're, while the last couple of webinars that we've done have talked about how we're efficient for you as a tool and help you, you know, essentially improve your bottom line, adding more margin, this presentation, I think, is really meant to, to talk about how Domotes as a tool can help you improve your reputa reputation or improve the engagement that you have with your customers. So I look forward to talking about this. Right. As a matter of fact, uh, getting right into it, uh, you know, we've we've uh, we've got a, a lot of users who are and and customers who have, have taken to heart uh, full engagement with us and give us feedback on a regular basis. Uh, the folks at SAV, 
uh, are the, are great examples of those folks, and and they have you know given us a lot of great feedback. And there's actually a a article that that has been published that we we have a link to that we'll make available at the at the end uh, so that you can read about it. And we're ju we've just taken a few excerpts uh, from that article and wanted to share them with you because they're in context to what it is that we're talking about today. So given the nature and complexity of the technology and systems we install in clients' homes, inevitably something is going to need to be reset or restarted. Domos helps the team at SAV get ahead of those kinds of problems. You know, Seth, I, lo I love this quote, and I think it speaks very well to the overarching theme that we have. In fact, we have a couple more quotes that we'll be showing here, like you stated. It's important to note that when I'm on the phone with several of our customers and they really start to get the value of Domotes and understand what it means for them, this is a very common theme. So I love the fact that SAV did an article and that we can point people to it, but this really gets to the overarching point of this presentation. Yeah, absolutely. Do you want to take this, Seth? Sure. So, you know, it's really not a matter of if, Right, but when stuff is going to break, we all know that everything, everything degrades over time. Whether it's a, a your, you know, your car or a pool or uh, you know any electronic device, if it's going to be used over time, it's going to need to be reset. Uh, you've had to reboot your smartphone, so has your customer. You've had to uh, up do a run and update that enhanced performance of that device. And uh, that increases the, the lifespan of that device. Uh, so when, if we know this going in to these relationships, then we certainly ought to be communicating that to our customers early and, and often. I mean, this is where the value comes in as far as what it is that we bring to the table as experts in this field. You know, Seth, I, I'm sure that other people are that are watching this webinar are thinking this as well, but I want to know what that guy was looking at on his phone that caused him to have that kind of reaction because he's, it's something seriously went wrong. You know, we talked about this aspect of the if, it's not if, it's when on the very first webinar, and it really hits to the heart of what Domotes is about, right? Because knowing that something is going to break making it easier for you guys as integrators to get in there and solve the problem quickly and proactively is an important part of what we do. And it's also, again, and we've said this before and I'll say it again, it's the value of us as a tool for you guys to help be more efficient. Um, we're going to talk about how that translates to your customer here in a few more slides. Right. <clears throat> so don't sell right. domos, right? Yeah, what, what is it? Go ahead, Seth. Yeah, don't don't sell us. I mean, we are, um, as we said, a facilitator for RMM, right? And of course, we have great things to offer the the folks who use our tool: ease of deployment, simplicity, uh, you know, automated network mapping. There's all kinds of really cool features that matter to us, matter to integration companies and service providers. But these aren't necessarily the things that we want to pitch as value. To the to the end customer. Yeah, I mean, Seth, when I've when I've been talking to customers before, I mean, obviously, you and I, I mean, we'll just flat out say it, right? As the sales guys within this team, that what we're trying to do when we go talk to you guys as integrators or installers of systems, we're absolutely talking to you about the ease of deployment of Domotes. We're talking to you about the simplicity of remote connectivity. I'm talking to you about the security of it as well, making sure you understand that Domotes is extremely secure when connecting to the systems that you install. And then of course we talk about the, 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 how quick it is to set up through automatic network mapping, leveraging you know, the Fing database that we have and enabling that in uh, the Domotes architecture is a beautiful thing. But when you start talking about that, when you guys as integrators, if you feel the need to talk about that to your customers, I think you're doing yourself a disservice right there. And that's really what we mean by not selling what Domotes does for you and why you're installing it. Do you want to add anything? I know we've talked several things about this behind the scenes, Seth. Is there anything else you want to add there or that I missed? I, yeah, I would just say that, you know, this has, this isn't just a Domotes thing. I mean, having to do with any tool that 
gives you the ability to take care of your customer better. Those are things that help you and, mm -hmm. uh, and not necessarily things that your customer will have the same value for. So, I mean, that's a good segue into really what, what should they sell? What should they sell? I agree. And, you know, I, it's important to note, and, you know, Seth, we've talked about this again, and it depends on the customers and who we're talking to, whether you are an IT professional and you're working for a large corporation or an enterprise and you're managing server rooms, or whether you are, you know, a residential audio video installer and you're doing home automation systems, regardless of what you're selling here, your customer, whether that's your boss or it's the family that you're communicating with, you should be selling that experience that you can provide to them. You know, um, there's, there's this notion of reliable service. Obviously, any of your customers are expecting that their, their system is going to be reliable. You know, they really, especially for families, I mean, if you're doing a, a home theater install, that really is about an emotional connection to what they just purchased and what, what they value. Um, you, we've talked about, we've talked about the, uh, your reputation. That to me is the relationship that you're building with your customer. Again, whether that's your boss or whether it's a colleague at work, you want them to feel like the product that you installed or the conference room that you installed is going to work reliably and efficiently for them. And all in all, I think that translates to, you know, overall positive feelings about what it is you installed and, and that what they get out of this system, what they paid for. Yeah, and and uh, who knows better than the person who's engaging the customer, what it is that the customers hired them to deliver, right? It's, it's, uh, it's the ability to take what it is that this disparate, you know, bundle of equipment uh, is delivering to that particular audience for their specific need and turning what it is that you are capable of doing into what it is that the end customer wants done for them. So the relationship is in, in relating to the, to the people that you're, you're selling and installing for, but you know, the, the custom aspect is the custom relationship between you and the end customer. If your customer thought that you were experimenting on them by installing uh, stuff for the very first time, they probably wouldn't be all that enthusiastic. But it doesn't mean that they don't want to feel like you're catering to them specifically. And, and so it's that end experience, it's that confidence in knowing that the system you installed uh, is going to deliver what it is that the, the end customer you know, one thing, Seth, that we should add while we, we talk about, well, I've mentioned IT guys, I've mentioned, you know, the, the CDO market or residential AV installs, security integrators are another one that, obviously security guys, and we've used this example before, but I think it's very pertinent. Yeah, you know, they need to know when their video camera or video security camera goes down and they need to know it immediately. They don't want to know about it after the fact. Domotes allows you to be more proactive with your customer, giving them that, that feeling of much more reliable service, giving them a positive feeling that the system you're installing is going to work more productively. I think that there are times when it's appropriate to show how you guys help maintain that security, help you, how you help maintain reliable service, but that, that's where you have to build a relationship with your customer and understand what they want. Some customers don't want to see what's going on behind the scenes. They don't necessarily need to see your network operations center and how it functions. But there are times when it is effective to show that. And it's a judgment call for you with your customer and knowing what your customer needs. Right. Do you agree with that, Seth? Yeah, I agree. I, I, I'm looking at this, uh, this little boy and I'm thinking, and I remember uh, my son doing a little forced uh, smile too, but... <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, you know, the, the bottom line is it's about, you know, did they want uh, the conference to start on time? Did they want music on the patio, at, as, you know, and to be a certain set of songs? That's the end experience. That's what they're really interested. They're not interested in the gear. They, they want the delivery of content. I want to know why the interior designer put the couch not directly in front of the TV and why it's forcing them <laughs> to look off to the left. That's what I know. Great. All right, moving on. So further to this point, you know, Domox fits more in the category of, of a tool 
then as a product to be uh, purchased at one price, marked up a certain margin and sold at another price. In fact, if I think if the customer end customer knows the name Domaltz, there's been a failure somewhere along the line because it's it's almost like telling your client, hey, I, I'm going to use Makita drills when I when I come in and and work on your your project, you know, or I'm going to use uh, these brand of this brand of zip ties. You know, it that's where Domaltz fits on every service vehicle, right nestled in between there, uh, because it's a facilitator. And the only brand that matters at all is is the the service provider, the integrator, the IT person, the the, the person who's uh, the one delivering that experience. So things that make you feel better and faster and more professional are great things for you, but not necessarily things that necessarily have to be sold to uh, the end customer. Yeah, I think it's an interesting point, uh, Seth. The the fact that Domotes is your tool, right? Your tool as the integrator, your tool as that um, IT installer. It, it's what you use to be able to better service your customer. And we're going to talk about pricing at the end of this and and how you value this. But the reality is is that um, in many instances you need to build this into your system that you're developing for that customer so that you can more effectively help them. And that's where you have to be able to sell the experience that they're going to get. You know, anybody that cuts into drywall or drills into drywall to mount the um, a TV stand or, or something like that, the customer doesn't care what tool you use or how you do it as long as you're doing it effectively, efficiently, keeping their system clean and you're not affecting their lives in any significant way. Domotes helps you do that, right? It helps you you manage that that install much better. And that's what we really want to get across with this. By the way, Seth, and it bothers me that I don't know where we got this ad on the left, but the yeah. fact that this Makita drill shows an 18 volt drill at 220 volts, I just don't understand what was going on there. But somebody did that. Well, um, you know, the pricing though I think is is interesting because people don't think twice about buying the tools they need uh, and justifying that because it's was what they need to complete a project, uh, you know, north of two hundred and three hundred dollars quite often, uh, plus replacement parts and and extra batteries and that sort of thing, and uh, and really that's where we fit. We're consumable, and it's all about the delivery of service thereafter and and what it does. And I think that's a good segue into. You know what what we want to talk about next in terms of you know who who wins in this scenario right so, how we, really how we do we empower their business right that's right and so from again from the article uh, written by the folks at, at the SAV our approach isn't about delivering service isn't just about that it's also about delivering convenience and peace of mind to our customers and again you know they don't know if you're driving a Ford truck or a Chevy they just want you there when you say you're going to be there, or even better, uh, they might not even want you there at all. Uh, they just want the the ongoing, the uninterrupted enjoyment of whatever it is that the, they've hired you to do. Yeah, and and time and time again, the people that have leveraged Domotes and used Domotes for what its real value is, and they kind of get to that value proposition, they understand that, and I start hearing this over and over after they've done several deployments with Domotes, that this it gives them this peace of mind. So I like it. I think it's a yep. very good quote. So if you don't mind, Seth, I'll, I'll take this one. Growing, you know, growing your company with efficiency, again, it gets back to that first webinar that we talked about, what's the value of Domotes to you as an integrator. And I think it's important to note that this column on the left and how this benefits you as an IT manager Right, eliminating truck rolls. Right, F not forcing you to go over to the second building to simply power cycle a uh, a TV or a projector or the audio video system. Right? Being able to remotely diagnose and program that stuff um, from your desk, right, or from your home office, is where Domotes truly benefits you. Ultimately, it translates into lower lower uh, costs when it comes to your labor. The other thing that we've done on this, and again, these are value propositions for Domotes to you, we have 
made it easier for you to have technicians or even your administrative assistants being able to look at the system and see, oh, there's something wrong here, right? This, this site has gone offline or this particular device is offline. Let me create a ticket so that you can then have your more advanced team, your tier two technical support or your programmers then get into the system and solve it rather than having them spending time on just knowing whether there's a problem or not. Now, we've talked about that in the previous webinars, but where this webinar focuses, how do these things benefit your customer? Well, Seth, and you pointed it out when you were talking about the last quote, the elimination of a truck roll, that does a couple things there. I mean, one is if you don't have to be in that customer's home or you don't have to disrupt their lifestyle and what they're doing, I think they're going to see real value in that. I mean, we've all we've all had the time where we've gone and bought a couch or our network service came out or it went down and we had to call the phone company or we had to call the cable company and they give you this massive four hour window. That is a complete disruption to your lifestyle. It can be a disruption to your work and what you're doing. If, if you can sell the ability to remotely diagnose and solve a problem to your customer, they should absolutely be seeing value on that. Uh, I would make the same statement about being able to remotely program something. So if a great example, I think, is once you've installed, let, let's use Lutron's lighting system, once you've installed the Lutron lighting system into a home, you know, a customer has to live with that for a while before they really understand whether that button or that keypad press, you know, what lights it really configured, what, what was it supposed to dim to, should it have gone to just 30% versus 50%. It, once they start to get used to that, that's when they want to call you up and say, hey, can you, can you change this lighting scene for me? It used to be that you had to do a truck roll. You had to go out and program it on site. Now what you can do with Domotes is you can program that remotely using the lighting designer tools, using our secure connectivity over Domotes. You don't have to be in their house. You can just do it from a ticket at your office. Uh, Seth, any other comments or things you wanted to touch on here? Absolutely. I mean, it's all about win-win scenarios, and that's what we wanted to, to get across here. I mean, uh, we like being in the mix, but it's it's between the the user of the, the tool and the, the end customer benefiting. Uh, and a reduction in, in labor costs, I mean, you definitely don't want your most expensive people, like JB, to be the ones responding to everything. You have to <laughs> hey be now, like... Hey, now, come on. Come on. I'm not like, the most expensive. Somebody, yeah, no, no. You, you need somebody like me. And, you know, somebody who could actually, you know, take care of a customer, make them feel good, uh, talk them off the ledge, and then dispatch, uh, which is, of course, through the, the you know, the knock-like interface, it becomes very easy to do. You can tell the difference, anybody can tell the difference between good and bad, right? Red and green, and yellow's a warning. So you, you don't have to have your most expensive people on call all the time. You just want to be able to uh, be responsive, and uh, and dispatch more effectively. You know, to your point about being responsive, uh, eliminating truck rolls, um, doing things remotely, that is also a time to reaction uh, point mm -hmm. as well for the customer. If you can find a way to more quickly solve that problem, you don't have to plan a truck roll. If you can do it that day, that customer is serviced that much faster and they, they should see that as a huge benefit to them. It, it, and it provides you a little bit more scalability as a as an integrator. Key word, and that's one of John Carlos' favorite words too: scalability. That's right. How's it scale. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it, you know, it, and and that's a good transition point too to I think the the next set of win win scenarios, which uh, addresses something that is brought up on a regular basis um, with, in conversations I have, which has to do with security. A lot of people, you know, they want to know. Wait a minute. How does this work? Are we are we opening things up? Are we are we becoming more vulnerable? Is this uh, redundant to something else that I'm already using? So maybe you could speak to a few of those uh, specific examples. Sure. I mean, security has always been a uh, let's call it priority number one for us at at Domotes, and we do that for several reasons. One, we want you as an integrator to feel good that the systems that you're installing, you're not opening up holes. Therefore, secure connectivity, things like two-factor authentication, and other security features that we've added 
uh, from an infrastructure point of view are there to make you feel confident that what you're installing is positive. That directly translates to your customers and it translates almost exactly like I stated it to you as well. Often, and I know this, a lot of you guys have high value customers, whether it's a residential install or if you're doing commercial installs and you're needing to make sure that you're not opening up holes uh, on their network, they want to know that their data is secure and they're not, they're not going to have to deal with, with issues like that. Therefore, it's a direct one-to-one -one relationship on the value that you get as well as the value that the customer gets. You know, when, when it comes to monitoring devices, I mean, obviously we're an RMM or remote monitoring and management tool. <laughs> monitoring devices is thing number one for us. How that translates to your customer, I think is about proactive responses. You know, if you can see, I used that example before of the video security camera, if you can see that that went down for some reason before an incident happens, that is huge value to your customer. And unfortunately, your customer, if you don't give them concrete examples about that, you know, about, hey, this is what can happen with this type of technology and this is why we monitor it for you, uh, they're going to have a hard time understanding the value of that until the time in which their home is broken into or their car is broken into in their driveway and then they see that that security camera went down and nobody knew about it that's when they understand the value but if you can give them use cases and you can talk to them about that i think they they will get that that value on the alerting and device alerts obviously this again speaks to you know proactive management of the systems that you installed knowing when a critical or an important device goes down and being able to solve it proactively is huge. Your customer should see that as an email coming to them saying, hey, we recognize that something happened in your home. It was, you know, product XYZ went down. We'd like to schedule a service call to come fix that for you. Or you can even say, if it happens to work out this way, hey, we noticed that this product went down we went ahead and fixed it by you know, reprogramming or restarting the system. Please let us know if you see any behaviors that are unusual or that you don't expect. I think that's a huge benefit to the customer. And it's, that's the type of experience that we talked about before that you should be selling, helping you strengthen your reputation and your value as seen by that customer. The beautiful thing about that is it's all domotes on the back end as a tool for you that's helping you look that beautiful to the customer. The fact that you, you mentioned uh, important devices, there's certainly devices that, that go to sleep. And uh, just because they, they went to sleep doesn't mean that it warrants an alert. And the, the key is, uh, you know, helping the, the customer appreciate the fact that not everything is an emergency, but also proactively communicating uh, that you are on top of it when something does happen that warrants uh, some degree of attention. Right. Right. Should we go to the next slide, Seth? Yeah. Yeah. So in terms of the services that, that the customers value, you know, they they want updates. They want a rapid response. They want tuning and, and maintenance. You know, like a piano, whether it gets played or not, needs to be tuned a couple times a year. And those, those types of services that people get uh, accustomed to elsewhere in their lives are very interestingly, on average, about 200 bucks. A month or a hundred bucks a month minimum for services like that so uh, adding things and communicating that that end value in terms of cleaning the systems or or generating reports that tell the customer about all of the things that happened in the last cycle um, that's how we can make sure that the the customers appreciate the value that that we're able to deliver it, it sounds to me, Seth, like what your suggestion is that they should start doing piano tuning as part of their business model. Is that is that not what you said? No. <laughs> the, uh, the thing that I, I really think is important about this slide is that these are things, at least when I look at this slide and what we're trying to get across to you guys, is that these are things that we've heard from direct feedback from customers and, and other integrators that they've been able to put into their business model or into their service contracts and agreements that is easy and simple and it helps them differentiate themselves from others in some sense these five bullets have nothing to do with domos 
but it is a way in which you guys can think about what are the additional tools that I can add or service capabilities that I can provide to my customer that they can see value and that they may be willing to pay for when we start talking about things at the end. Okay. Right. I've so. heard over the years, I mean, we've been talking about this product category of, of service contracts and, and maintenance and, and uh, you know, agreements that, that remain uh, you know, proactively engage with the customer for years. This isn't a new topic. We're able to leverage the fact that so much equipment's got, you know, this IP uh, element that it can uh, broadcast uh, information about itself. We're, we're just leveraging that now to be even more proactive than we should have always been. And, uh, you know, some of those creative things uh, fall into the category of, of concierge type of services. So and if that, we want to... That's a great transition to this slide. You were supposed to say beef though. I mean, I think we've been oh, forgetting to do that throughout this time. So, you know, concierge services in my mind are an elevated way in which you can really start to differentiate your company from others. Um, this is not a new concept by any means. The hotel industry have, has been using this for years and the term concierge really comes from that industry. But what it can do for you as a, an integrator or a managed service provider really helps differentiate yourself from others. And I've heard from several different, um, several different integrators out there, they're looking at, at how can they provide an elevated uh, level of service. One of the most common things that I hear from integrators is, it's great that you provide me this tool, but how can I make it a 24 seven response tool? Because that's where they see themselves differentiating from you know, their competitor down the street. And, and we're going to talk about that in a minute when we talk about some outsourcing options, I think, Seth. I know you have a couple guys that you could, you could mention. But, but let me add, I've talked to dealers as well about doing things like advanced product replacements. And you guys know your vendors that will provide you advanced, advanced product replacement. And you often rely on them as a company or a manufacturer because they do that for you. And it adds a lot of value to you because you can more quickly respond yeah. and more timely respond to your customers. There are ways in which you can stock devices in- Not, not stock your customer. No, no, please don't stock your customer now. You, let's, let's, you can hold inventory for, your, device, for your, uh, your customers so that if a TV goes bad, you can more quickly replace that. That's the idea behind how you as an integrator can do some of these advanced product replacements. You know, obviously that takes money to do that, but if you can create a business model that works appropriately for you, it's something you can look at. Uh, warranties. Warranties, you know, Seth and I, you, Seth, you talked about this with me before, but manufacturer warranties are often limited, you know, and they're also limited to the product itself. They're not, they, they usually will not take into the account the actual service time and replacement of those products that may have been defective. The other thing is, is that you guys can put in, you as integrators can put in service agreements where you will come out and replace these things on a regular basis if necessary. And it can just be built into it as a warranty. If Seth, you and I've talked a lot about that. Is there any other things you want to say on those bullets? Yeah, there? you know, I, I've even uh, we've we've got clients who are are getting really creative, or I should say, you know, maybe thinking a few years out in terms of how our our collective markets are are changing, and uh, they're starting to look at hardware as something that everybody knows is going to be replaced. So why not treat it as a, a leased item? Uh, you know, again, it it's kind of goes back to a heritage of buying something for X, you mm -hmm. know, marking it up, selling it for Y and, and running your business on the difference. And, and we're, we're missing the opportunity in the middle there to communicate realistically about how equipment will behave. We can predict that, things are going to, unpredictable things will happen. You know, there will be lightning strikes. There will be uh, other contractors who install things that uh, maybe cause disruptions. So being uh, the, the connected, uh, you know, responder, first responder in many cases is, is really the key. And it's what the customer gives them peace of mind. So it gives the integrator service provider the opportunities to remain engaged, in a positive, proactive way. I've even heard more creative 
uh, ways to sell a package solution like um, you know when they do go out to service uh, uh, you know racks of equipment and dust them and clean them and they're going to replace the batteries because the last thing they want is for a customer to call complaining that something's not working because batteries failed so why not while you're there <laughs> yeah. just go ahead and replace them you, you know, should why be not? replacing your your smoke detector batteries once a year anyway they, right they, you know that wouldn't be bad either you know they're going to call <laughs> you anyway yeah. uh, but we do have uh, you know the whole outsourcing thing as you said is is certainly not a new concept um, lots of industries do this and have uh, knock uh, type of, uh, you know, outsource providers, but we have in our, you know, we're growing a, an ecosystem that we get to be part of. Uh, we've got uh, partners like One Vision and Creek and, and Axios and Smartopia. These are, if you don't want to be taking a phone call at, at uh, midnight on a weekend, uh, but you don't want your customer not to speak to a human, you know, that has value. And, and so there are service providers who will answer the phone as if they are you or your company and let you know about it. And uh, then you can choose how to respond, dispatch in the morning, or is it, uh, is it emergency? But that way your, your customer feels well cared for. Seth, I, I, you touched on two points that I think are, are really good here. The, the outsourcing and, and, and this notion of using, or let's say creating a, a tier one technical support for your customer through companies like you said, you know, One Vision, Krika, Smartopia, uh, Axios, those are, those are great guys. They all have slightly different business models, so you need to see what fits with you guys as integrators. Uh, I think they cater much more towards um, the, the um, residential or light commercial type of services. I know that Smartopia and Axios in particular are also looking at um, enterprise solutions. So I think that they, they can cater to higher levels as well. But I think that these things are a sign of the times and how things are changing in these markets, which you alluded to. And, and the second point that I thought you brought up that was good earlier was this notion of leasing equipment. What's interesting and one of the the, the things I hear from integrators and quite frankly, their customers when we've talked to them is, you know, here I am installing this $50,000 or $100,000 system, knowing that in three to five years, this thing is going to be out of date. I'm going to want newer technology. I think there's an opportunity for integrators that are servicing those types of customers. Again, whether it's enterprise or commercial or residential, to think about how they can leverage these types of services and improve or change their different business model. You know so, anybody who's guilty of always needing to have the latest uh, smartphone? Uh, right? Yeah, yeah, I could be that guy. That yeah. could be me. So, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, we, we, we've sort of gotten accustomed to this notion that, that our technology, the things that we're, that make our life easier, more efficient, uh, these are things that have a, a certain life expectancy, whether they're broken or not. You know, you see TVs for sale that you know are fully functional, but people wanted a flat panel because right? yes. they wanted to maximize the space in their room. So, you know, it's it's something that our market is accustomed to. And well, you know, I, I know that the people on the commercial side uh, benefit from the fact that, uh, you know, they're not necessarily the, the people making the purchase aren't necessarily dealing with their own money. So they're more uh, free to, to make some purchases um, and updates more frequently and, and get rid of old equipment. But you know, it's, it's definitely something that folks need to be paying attention to. Exactly. You know, in the interest of time, Seth, let's, let's quickly yeah. talk about the violet app. Um, you want to touch on this? Yeah, well, like uh, we just talked about concierge service, the uh, Violet is kind of like room service. It's like uh, it's the the end customer uh, getting an, an app in their hands that allows them to have some sense of what's going on with their own uh, system. But it's it, and it's got a bunch of really great features in it that allow for voice blocking and presence detection and things like that. But it's it's also a great way to remain connected, present, but not intrusive. So hey, who and, was the one who, who supplied it? It was the, the integrator supplied this tool. And Seth, let me let me point out to, to our audience here that 
you know, the Violet app and the way it's architected right now is very much, and this is speaking as a product manager here, very much architected towards the residential customer, right? The, the AV integrator that's installing product for um, a residential application, the parental control mm -hmm. functionality that's in it, the UI and the way it looks, we recognize that. I think it's important for you guys to know that Domotes is committed to uh, finding a solution or creating a solution that works very well for IT departments, for franchises, for retail establishments, and it's something that we are definitely focused on. So I wanted to make sure that that people know that and understand that. You know, and it, it just occurs to me that there may be some folks who don't know what this is or, or why we call it Violet. You know, the point of the name Violet was to have it disassociated with Domotes. We don't want uh, the connection to be made. Uh, the the apps uh, the app is available in the App Store and and Google Play. Uh, it gets branded with the the integrator's logo and integrator and service provider's contact details. So it's it's really it's an enhancement of that relationship, that stickiness that we want to encourage uh, more of between the end customer and and the service provider. And and it will continue to evolve. I mean, we're we're constantly improving uh, our tool set. And the point of this is not to just reveal everything to your customer. It's more of a tier zero self-help if, if you want to give them that kind of control. But it's all customizable by the service provider. So they're not necessarily just turning it all over. They're revealing and giving capability uh, to their end customer according to what they feel comfortable with. So they, they manage all that in the back end. Right. Right. I, I think it reiterates the point that Domotes is really a SaaS based company that's building tools for you as an integrator to help you run your business more efficiently. Indeed. All right. So we it's, do get conversations around the topic of, of, of service contracts and agreements. Uh, I, you know, we've, this conversation has been alive and well, uh, at least for the last 20 years that I can remember. And, and uh, there are all different kinds of ways to, approach this. You know, I think that leading with the notion that equipment's going to need maintenance, systems need maintenance, uh, and in fact, if somebody doesn't agree uh, to a maintenance agreement, maybe they need to sign off on that, you know, make it, make it something that is apparently standard uh, and that somebody is sort of taking upon the liability of opting out of rather than trying to sell it as an add-on, it should be considered a, a default. This is this is how we do business. This is how people do business with us. Uh, we take care of systems. We don't disappear. Well, yeah, Seth. Seth, if I can add to that, I mean the, the the thing that you're saying there, and I, I guess to to word it in my way is this is about setting the proper expectations mm -hmm. with yeah. your customer on that on that notion of hey, I realize you just paid a lot of money for this equipment. This equipment is technology. This technology requires updates, right? Things will go down. You guys will inevitably have a problem. You know, when you're, you could even use examples like when, you're, when your son or daughter brings in their new device or the, the friends bring in a new device and it disrupts the network in some way, you know, that is a problem that we will have to solve. And I think if you set those expectations up front, it really helps you position that experience that they are going to have with you and you can help uh, manage that appropriately. Right. Go ahead, Seth, I didn't mean to interrupt you on that. No, that's okay, and don't, they don't have to take our word for it. Uh, if, you, uh, if I can do the beep sound and we can go back to our, our final quote from that article. Uh, oh yeah. The SAV uh, folks, service is absolutely where the future of our industry resides. Now's the time to start setting your company apart from the other guys. If you don't do it now, someone else will. will. And it, it's, a, it's almost a, a, a warning, right? That, that look, uh, you want to be the one that they come to uh, down the road. You don't want someone else to come in out from under you and, and you be the one that they had to, you be the system that has to be rescued. Uh, you wanna be the one to go in and rescue other systems. 
That's right. I do. I like this quote. And this is, this is, I mean, Eric really did a good job with these quotes of kind of framing our, uh, this, this presentation that we gave. And it's funny because it was an article that was done several months ago. And I think it's, it's pertinent because we repeat it all the time. Hey, Seth, there must be one more thing here. There is <laughs> always one more thing, and it has to do with money, right? How do people calculate the value of what it is that they offer? And, and I get asked all the time, so, hey, what can I charge? You know, if this is what, you know, we're paying for a, a box, and this is what we're paying for activation of that box, um, you know, how can I, what can I sell it for? And uh, it really comes down to, you know, thinking of it in the in a reverse way, I suppose, you know, how much are you saving? Uh, you know, did it save you a truck roll? How much is that worth? You know, did it save the customer's satisfaction with you and future references or referrals? Um, you know, can can your proactivity uh, be have a value placed on it? You know, if, if you need to deliver something at a certain date and time, you know, in a conference room or, uh, you know, Super Bowl's coming up, you know, what is making sure everything's working in advance, you know, what is that value? Uh, what is that worth? Hey, I mean, Seth. Heard, yeah, go ahead. One thing I do want to point out here is that if you as an integrator with your customer are saying that you guys need to pay me $3 per month because that's what Domotes is charging me, you're off on the wrong foot already and that that's a very bad thing and yeah. i i just really wanted to reiterate that because i've seen time and time again where people have said well i'm going to charge my customer you know 36 dollars plus 40 points so you know let's say roughly 50 dollars per year for this service that is not the right way to be thinking about pricing of service contracts or the value that can be associated with this would would you agree with that Seth? yeah you know i'm, I'm gonna out a friend of mine named mike uh, I won't go into more detail than that. I won't. I won't say that he happens to be in the Midwest, but, uh, but Mike, <laughs> Mike called me up and he said, "Yeah, you know, I'm I'm selling this for five bucks a month." And I said, "Oh, Mike, no, 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 no. You know, you need if if you need to add more things that, that make it more valuable, like firmware updates, you know, or or things that are uh, that, that make sure that you know you are going to avoid having to, you know." go out and service and maintain systems um you know in inopportune times for yourself that has value you know but but definitely don't look at it as simply something you mark up from that three dollars a month right it, yeah, and, so. and what do we typically hear we typically hear between 25 and 35 you know often maybe up to 50 dollars a month uh but that's not that's not the uh, all of it i mean we got some folks who just say hey look my customers are so high end the last thing I'm going to do is, is charge them this maintenance fee. It's in my own best interest to uh, to be making sure their stuff is working all the time. And uh, and yet we've also heard people say that well, you know they they charge a premium. It's uh, thousands of dollars a year that they charge, and there's there's no option about it. It's right. just part of doing business. Yeah, Seth. I mean, to me, if if you're going to charge zero dollars, I think you are making a business decision there that says Domotes as a tool is providing yeah. me so much value that the proactive um, aspects of of RMM means that I run my business more efficiently. And I think that that's an important note. I also want to point out on the far extreme end, I've heard um, integrators in some certainly more high value neighborhoods, let's just call it that, charging $10,000 a year for that more concierge-like service. That's right. Every time one of their customers buys you know, a TV, even if it's a $10,000 85-inch OLED or something like that, they buy a second one at the same time to put in their inventory so that if something goes wrong with that product, they can replace it immediately or that day. So it really does vary. And I think so much, so much of this has to depend on what you as a business want to do, how you want to be perceived or the reputation you want to have in the business, as well as the market conditions that you're in, because right? that makes a big difference as well. And staff and availability and, and your scalability. You know, I, others will say, you know, they do event prep. So what is event prep? You know, the, the folks, if they're buying this expensive system uh, or they're, you know, it's going into this uh, big building, uh, you know, they're going to have 
conferences or they're going to have uh, you know events in their backyard or they're going to have a bunch of people over just ask them when when is the big uh, the company event when is the big uh, when's the bar mitzvah or the wedding and, and the reception and, and all that kind of stuff and, and go there a day in advance or a couple of days in advance and run through everything make sure it's all working ask them what scenes they want pre-programmed just for that event so that the day of the last thing that they're thinking about the the end customers uh should i use it or not or i'll, I'll be afraid or embarrassed if it doesn't work so i don't want to use it and you're you're actually doing yourself a favor by uh empowering the customer to use it and uh you, you're creating a external showroom for yourself in effect so it's a uh, it's definitely in your best interest but market will dictate that you have to decide and the best way to decide frankly i mean you know we can have our own testimonials uh, sav uh can have theirs the best way to get your own testimonials is to put a box uh domo's agent i should say out at a a friendly site where it, you can get feedback that will be relevant to the types of systems that you do or want to do more of in the future and get that feedback so that you can develop your own uh, your own set of testimonials and you, you can appreciate the value for yourself. And thanks to our sponsor, uh, Trendnet, uh, we've, we've got uh, the agreement from them to make that even more easy. So the, the offer uh, for those who've attended our webinar today, uh, they can go to this, this site, domos.com slash promo and uh, redeem or get a 50% discount off of boxes courtesy of, of TrendNet, just so that it's, it's a little easier for you to justify putting another box out there, getting it activated. If you have any issues related to it from a, a setup and configuration standpoint, or you need some uh, you know, trial extension, you can always deal with, with us directly. I'm Seth at domotes.com, really simple, or, or sales at domotes.com, and, uh, and we'll take care of you. But please go to this link, uh, redeem it. You may as well get, a, get another box or get your first box. And uh, we really appreciate TrendNet for stepping up and, uh, and wanting to be a part of this and make it easy for, for folks to, to get started with, with uh, this level of service. So I, I appreciate that, Seth. And I think we're, we're coming up on our time. I do think we have a few questions that have, that have come in. So why don't we spend some time uh, answering a few of those for the next few minutes. Um, let, me, uh, let me go ahead and read some of these questions that we have, Seth, and then maybe I'll address it and then you can chime in too. Uh, the first question that I have is, we are finding it very difficult to market this product. We have been struggling and unable so far to create value in the customer's mind. We have no issue installing the units for free in return for monthly RMR, but uncovering that pain point for the customer is tough. So Seth, when I, when I read that, and I think that that really highlights some of the last set of slides that we, we've talked about, but I hear, I hear this question coming in saying, hey, I am trying to sell Domotes. I am trying to position the Domotes agent or the black box as a line item on their, their um, products that they're purchasing and having a difficult time with that. Um, I feel my statement that I want you to chime in on that, Seth, is I feel that this is where you guys need to talk about the Domotes agent as a tool you need to factor in, you know, as an integrator, you need to factor in maybe this cost or split this cost across your other services that you may have, or even across other products. Um, quit trying to look at products as a, you know, value plus point or, or dollars plus 40 points for you and start realizing that this is a service that you're offering. Do you have any thoughts on that, Seth? Yeah, you know, I, I take a page directly out of the playbook from the satellite service providers. You know, I, I'll, I'll never forget the day that uh, my wife told me that we were switching from one service provider to another and I had to go into the basement and find a box to send, uh, to send, be able to send this device back uh, to the service provider. And, and I, I was like, we don't own the box. So, you know, don't sell domos, don't sell the box. Take the emphasis off the box, right? Put it on 
the network system, uh, bundle it in there. I mean, really, the, the cost of the box is it's under two hundred dollars, and and that's a rounding error on on every system. I mean, not just the low or inexpensive systems. It's it's nothing, especially for the fact that it's going to potentially prevent you from having to take an, an hour and a half uh, one way trip well, just to go reboot something. Seth, to that point, I mean. The majority of of um, cities that I've been in, when I've talked to integrators, they point out that the cost of a truck roll is more than that hundred eighty dollars or that two hundred dollars for that box. So just saving one truck roll really helps pay for it right there. So you have to be thinking more about how you're going to run your business more efficiently. You know, and Seth, in the interest of time, let me get to um, another quick question, um, and then we have a sure. few more. The next question was, what is the average that integrators are charging clients for domos? And I think that question came in probably before that last slide that we showed. Um, let me just quickly answer to say, you know, that the average number that I have seen has been somewhere around the $30 per month mark. But again, I want to say that that's very um, market driven and depends on where you are. I mean, if you're in the, the middle of Ohio or the middle of Kansas, uh, it's probably different than if you're in Manhattan or San Francisco or other more high value markets. Would you agree with that, Seth? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, that's why we, we can answer the question to a certain point, but, but uh, again, it'll come down to what is the reality in that space? What is the, the client, the target customer type? And you know, where, how expensive was the system and how does this fit in comparison to that? But if it's yeah. uh, like Hector suggested who, who wrote in, um, you know, it, it should be put this way. Uh, Domos is a tool and you don't sell your tools to your customer. You don't sell that's your right. Don't sell your drill. <laughs> that's a great, that's a great point. Let me, let me get to this next question. I like this because this is a little bit more forward thinking. The question was, how do you cover the cost of equipment in leasing options when the client doesn't pay for all of it? Looking for ideas on this. Uh, you know, I, I certainly want to point out that we're not in the business here to tell you how to, you know, manage your finances and accounting. But as with typical leases, you sign up for a particular length of time that you will service the customer. Um, the thing you need to do to make leasing attractive, just like they do in the automobile industry, is set a price point that is where the customer sees value and also knowing that they will want to replace that equipment in a certain at a certain point of time honestly the equipment depends uh, or excuse me the length of the lease i think depends on the type of equipment as well as what the customer expectations are and that's something i think you as an integrator have to figure out within your business model um, there's there's different things there that we can talk about. I would love to actually have a more in-depth conversation. So if you guys, if you do have questions about that, feel free to email sales at domotes.com and I'd be happy to get on the phone and brainstorm ideas for your particular situation. And there are a ton of resources that we have available uh, on our site. I've I've sent out uh, frequently asked answers to frequently asked questions. You know, so I am more than happy to send that kind of stuff uh, to anybody who's interested. I don't like to bombard people with with uh, rants or anything like that, but I I've, uh, definitely have some strong opinions. And, and I also have uh, emails that I can send with links to various resources about technical um, aspects to our solution uh, to answer those types of questions. So if interested in receiving that information from me, by all means, Seth at domotes.com feel free to send me a note. I'll reply and I'll send all that stuff to you. And again, the promo is domotes.com slash promo. And uh, it's, it, again, courtesy of uh, TrendNet. So we definitely thank our partners. Uh, One and more. AB. Yeah, go ahead. One more quick question. I think we can get in there before our time's up here, Seth. It says, and I'm going to roll these two, this question and statement into one. It says, can you guys share a typical service contract that we can use as reference? And then the follow-up statement was to please mention again the third-party companies that provide tier one technical support. And the reason I roll those into one is I suspect that uh, companies like One Vision and Krika, as well as Smartopia and Axios, all four of those guys can probably help with some of the service contract aspects here too. 
because they're dealing with that type of stuff directly. Uh, do you have any more thoughts on that, Seth, before we close out? No, it, you know, in the resources that I'm happy to share, you know, we're, we're not asking anybody to, to experiment on us or on their customer. And I, I think it is important to know that, that there are uh, large companies from restaurant chains to uh, a little known company called Best Buy, uh, their MagCare program is is built on on domos, and and they don't sell domos, uh, but they also moved from uh, putting a domos box on on the at the sites where they sold service agreements to making the internal decision. It made more sense to put a box on every site by default simply because of the money that they were losing on the sites where they didn't have it because the most expensive way they had to uh, solve problems was rolling trucks. So it, 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 I, we don't have to be the ones to, to preach about it and, and others don't have to be the ones to learn things the hard way. We, we've got a lot of available tools and, and tips and tricks that we can share. Well, that's excellent. I, I appreciate the, the questions. I hope you guys enjoyed this webinar. Um, I know that in the next uh, week or so, we will have it published. Again, I wanna thank TrendNet for sponsoring this webinar and also making it possible for you guys to get a pretty good discount if, uh, on the order of 50% discount from um, your local establishments. I believe it's uh, primarily through ADI as well as Ingram Micro, depending on where you're buying, but please visit domotes.com forward slash promo. And um, make sure you email Seth and I if you guys have any more questions. Thank you very much.